So when Kirchhoff came out and said to everybody, publish your algorithm, but don't share the key, it really made sense to a lot of people. It basically, it, the way I kind of look at it is like, do you have a great idea? If you have a great idea, then typically you start to tell people about your idea. And it's kind of like the nightly news or, you know, if you, it doesn't matter which side of the aisle you're on, uh, Republican or Democrat or wherever you are, uh, the other side is going to try to throw darts at your idea as much as you can. And it's just, that's just the way that we live. So if you have a good idea, then what Kirkhoff says is, is publish the idea, have people throw darts at it. And if it holds up, then it's valid. And so the, the, really the concept of that, the Kirkhoff principle came to life. And uh, over time, people started to come up with these different ways to validate things. And one of them, one of them was the birthday attack. So that is important because another one is this right here. It's called the avalanche effect. And you may have heard of this before. And if not, then uh, hang on tight because uh, you're in for a, a wild ride here. Uh, so this avalanche effect here is kind of neat. If we take something that kind of looks like Mount Fuji, if you will, and uh, we put a, a little cog up here. And this cog is going to be, for me at least, a way that I can um, draw a gear. This is going to be a gear. And if you don't agree with the, my drawing, then uh, definitely shoot me an email and tell me how much my drawings suck. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you what this avalanche effect does because every algorithm since August Kirkhoff said, hey, yo, we need, to, we need to publish our idea, but don't share the key. It needs to hold up to a vulnerability test on it using methods like that birthday attack where, you know, if it's a finite key space, which means that there, it has constraints on the number of keys that it, it, it offers, uh, then it is susceptible to the work factor to be able to be attacked and compromised and uh, things like that birthday attack that we just talked about. So if I draw a little little process or a little gear up top here, and let's say that I have uh, a couple of, of different things. So I have uh, input one over here, okay? And then over on the right-hand side, I have input two. So these are my two uh, inputs that I will be uh, making sure go into my little gear. And once they go into the gear, then the gear, if it holds up to, if your algorithm right here, so let me type in the algorithm, type, if your algorithm holds up to this um, avalanche effect, then what it should do is it should spit out an output that is mathematically unrelated to the other output. And so in this particular uh, case here, let me, and I gotta construct it, just give me a second here. I'm gonna draw a couple bubbles here. And what we'll do is we'll say, um, over here, we'll say input one. And then over here, we'll say input two. And then let me kind of clean it up a little bit. I'll throw that bad boy right in there. And put this guy in here. And so what these are is essentially this is going to be the output from input one. Right? And then this is going to be the output from input two over here. And because of that, we could say that whatever algorithm is being used right here, in this particular case, in this scenario, for this to hold up to that avalanche test, this algorithm is legit. Now, of course, we wouldn't run it just one time, right? We would run it thousands and thousands and thousands of times to make sure that we don't have any collisions. Because think about this right here. If I put in up here, for instance, Ben as input one, and 
Over here, I had Razik as input two, and I didn't get two um, very different dispersed outputs. And from those inputs, that would force a collision. So for instance, let's say that the input of one or input one of Ben gives me the output of whatever the output of input one is. Well, if I put in input two here of Razik and it gives me the same output as Ben would give me, now I got a collision and that's a no-no. So in algorithm design, can you hold up or can, if you publish your algorithm using the Kirchhoff's principle um, to the world and let them throw darts at it, will it stand up to what's called the avalanche test or avalanche effect in, in you know, geography or, uh, you know, Anything dealing with 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 mountains, an avalanche just would go anywhere down the mountain right here. But essentially, if we throw something up here at the top, it's going to come down to the bottom and leave it wherever it needs to be. But typically, if an algorithm is worth its weight in gold, where if you have the input of one of Ben and dang it. If I have the input of one of Ben and the input one Ben here gives me the output here, and then I have the input two of Razik and it gives me something that is totally mathematically unrelated, it holds up to that avalanche effect and in fact would pass a birthday attack and adheres to Kirchhoff's principle. All right, uh, this is a another one that is kind of kind of cool here um, So being able to see some of the context is coming very handy. You see how the crypto just from memorizing that really immediately will help you eliminate at least one of the answers, if not multiple answers. Uh, so I would I can't stress that enough to make sure that uh, you know not just for our own personal enrichment in, in learning some of these these algorithms, but also you know, uh, for the purposes of the test, it, this, it comes in very handy. So great job on that. So when I look at the word hashing here, um, I think I can immediately eliminate C because it's not encryption. But knowing what encryption algorithms do, it's either gonna be a substitution cipher or a transposition, which means that we switch out 
different characters in the plain text with ciphertext, or we switch positions with the uh, the text like a uh, a Caesar cipher or something along those lines. So uh, keep that in mind, like a maybe a rot 13 or a, a Caesar cipher, which is a rotate three. Um, so if you've never seen those before, they're they're pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, um, whoops, D is the correct answer here. D is the correct answer here.